So welcome to the first lecture of electronic devices and circuits. Today we will be studying about semiconductor basics. So before even starting the subject, let's just know what is the difference between EDC and analog electronics. EDC and analog electronics. So both of them are dealing with semiconductor devices. Here also, you are studying semiconductor devices, you are studying MOS, FET over here, and then you are studying MOS and FET over here. So now what is the difference between both of them? So the EDC, it deals with the semiconductor devices without applying the signal, while the analog electronics, it deals with the semiconductor devices when operated with the analog signals. Now the analog signals can be sine, square or triangular wave. Now just very quickly let's know about temperatures. So in EDC we'll be dealing about, we are dealing with three types of temperatures. Now the three temperatures are absolute temperature, room temperature and the ambient temperature. The absolute temperature is 0 Kelvin, the room temperature is 300 Kelvin and the ambient temperature also known as Ta. Now this temperature is popularly used in all the communication system and this is 290 Kelvin. Now you must have known a very famous formula of converting Kelvin into Celsius. Let me write this down. Yes, so this is a formula. Kelvin is equal to degree Celsius plus 273. So if I calculate it, so this will come out to be minus, oh, I'm sorry. So this comes out to be minus 273. This comes out to be 27. And this is 17 degrees Celsius. So that's what you should know about temperature. Let's move on to the next topic. So the next important topic is thermal voltage. Now thermal voltage is also known as volt equivalent of temperature. Let me, let me just quickly write the formula over here. So this is the formula. Vt is equals to Kt over Q. K is the Boltzmann constant and Q is the charge. So if I put both of these values into this formula, we'll get Vt is equals to T upon double one six zero zero volts now if t is equals to zero kelvin this will give us vt is equals to zero volt right now if t is equals to 300 kelvin then vt will come as 300 upon 11600 which gives us 0 0.02586 volt or 26 millivolt. Now this is very important. You have to remember this. And of course this formula. Okay, so now let's solve some of the gate question based on this very basic formula. So this question was asked in gate 19097 for one mark and the question is the unit of Q by KT is. So we just had a look, we just studied about the formula of VT, let's write it down. So this is the formula Vt is Kt by Q, the unit was volts. So here this is just the reciprocal of this equation. So what should be the answer? 
the answer should be B. Well, this was pretty easy. Let's move on to the next question. So the next question is that the standard room temperature corresponds to which voltage? 0 volt, 26 volt, 26 millivolt or 0 0.26 millivolt. So the options will always be confusing. I just told you that the standard room temperature corresponds to 26 millivolt. So if you don't remember the answer but you remember the formula, you can easily solve it. The formula was Vt is equal to T upon 11600 and the standard room temperature is 300. This will give you 26 millivolt approximately. So this is the answer. Either you should remember the concept or you can remember the formula. Both the ways you are gonna get the answer. Now the next topic is mobility of charge carriers. The charge carriers, we know that the charge carriers are either the electrons or the holes. Right? So mobility, it denotes that how fast is the charge carrier is moving from one place to another. Let me just put down its formula. Okay, so the formula of mobility is drift velocity upon field intensity. Just wait a second. Vd over field intensity which makes its unit to be meter square over volt second. Now note that the drift velocity is always greater than the normal velocity because you are drifting them, right? Now you have to remember some of the, uh, you know, the mobility of the holes and the electrons. Let me just put it here. So these are the values for electron and hole mobility for germanium and silicon. So if we take the ratio for germanium, mu p for germanium will get 2.1. And if you take this ratio for silicon, we'll get silicon will get 2.6. You have to remember these values. Now, if you look at these numbers, you'll see that the electron mobility is always greater than the hole mobility. It is 1300, it is 500, it is 3800, it is 1800 which means that the electron can travel faster and it also contributes to more current than the hole. Now some important points about mobility. The mobility of a charge carrier it decreases with increase in temperature. And why do it happen? Because as the temperature increases, the atom it vibrates and thermal vibration or agitation it occurs and due to which the mobility decreases. The mobility is directly proportional to 10 to the power minus m where m is the constant whose value is given by 2.5 for electrons and 2.7 for holes for the silicon and 1.6 is for electrons and 2.33 for holes for germanium. The next topic is energy gap. So the energy gap is the difference between a conduction band and a valence band. This is denoted by small g or capital G. So the energy gap for germanium at 0 Kelvin is 0 0.785 electron volt and for silicon it is 1.21 electron volt. At 300 degree Kelvin which is the room temperature this is 
0.72 electron volt and this is 1.12 electron volt now note that as the temperature increases the energy gap decreases okay now let's study the energy band diagram we'll look at the three categories first we'll study about metals then about the insulators and then about the semiconductors in the metals we know that free electrons are available even at the zero kelvin so what happens here is wait a second yes so what happens here is his, that the valence band and the conduction band it kinds of overlap i'm sorry for my bad drawing okay so are you able to differentiate i think i should take a different color don't worry for the next of them i'll take a different color okay so this is the conduction band and this is the valence band and we can see that this is the overlapping okay so the electron concentration in the metal is approximate 10 to the power 28 per meter cube but as the temperature increases the overlapping also increases so due to the overlapping of valence band and conduction band the metals they exhibit exhibit p t c of r now what is ptc it means positive temperature coefficient which means that as temperature increases the r also increases so the examples you can name any metal ag au copper or iron okay so in the insulators the type of bonding is ionic if you remember from the chemistry the conductivity is almost zero and i think i'm drawing good lines this time right so the difference between the conduction band and the valence band is huge due to which the electrons in the valence bands are not able to jump to the conduction band and due to which there is no conductivity or conductivity is zero so the examples are glass sio2 wood plastic etc now the next thing is semiconductor the energy band diagram of semiconductor which is the most important one i want you to focus on this so you know the very basic definition of semiconductor would be that those elements whose conductivity lies between an insulator and those of the conductors this is conductor obviously so this is the conduction band this is the valence band i'm purposely using the red pen because this is important so as you can see the semiconductors they are insulators but where at zero degree kelvin at 300 or 
as the temperature is increasing the co covalent bonds are broken due to which the electrons they gain energy and they jump here easily and they become conductors so here they are behaving as insulators as you increasing the temperature they are behaving as the conductors so what we can say that the semiconductors they are bipolar in nature which means they have two different types of charge carriers so at 300 degree kelvin the energy band gap it decreases and as the temperature is increased the number of covalent bonds are broken and electron and hole pair are generated out of which the electron jumps from conduction band from valence band to the conduction band now this what it means that it exhibits ntr of r which means as the temperature increases the resistance decreases which is the opposite of the first case note that the insulator they also exhibit ptc okay let's have a look at the einstein equation so let me change the color of my pen yes so in a semiconductor diffusion constant of electrons to the mobility of electrons is equals to diffusion constant of the holes to the mobility of the holes which is again equal to the thermal voltage which was again t over 11600 i hope you remember this we just did it in the first place okay so this einstein equation was not given by einstein it was uh, you know it was uh, given this name to give him honor after his death so this it uses the relationship between the diffusion constant the mobility and the thermal voltage so what we can see is that d over mu is directly proportional to the temperature and mu over d is directly proportional or sorry inversely proportional to the temperature so the unit of mu to d can also be given as this from here okay so now what is this now this is the diffusion constant so from this formula we can write that d of n is equals to mu of n over vt and then d of p is equals to mu of p to vt and the unit for d or the diffusion constant can be given as centimeter square over voltage per voltage second into volt so you can cancel it and it can be centimeter square per second easy i think it was very easy don't get confused over this this was the unit of the mobility which we did earlier so i put the unit of mobility and then i multiplied with the unit of vt and which was giving me this okay now you should note some important points that the diffusion constant of the charge carrier it decreases with the temperature the diffusion constant of the charge carriers can be negative or fractions the diffusion constant is a material constant related with the property called diffusion okay so if i have to calculate the diffusion constant for germanium what i should do dn was mu n into vt we just studied it so i'm just putting the values this was 3800 and this is 26 millivolt right so this becomes 90 9 cm square per second 
Similarly, dP diffusion constant for the holes can be given as 1800 into 26 into 10 to the power minus 3 which is 47 centimeter square per second right so i want you to calculate for the silicon please we are doing it at 300 kelvin okay don't get confused because that's why we are taking it 26 so the formula was again mu n pt and then this was I'm quickly writing the answer, right? 34 centimeter square per second. And then for this, it will be mu P V T just 13. If I'm not wrong. Right. Now let's study the mass action law. So this law is widely used for extrinsic semiconductors to calculate the minority charge carriers. I'll tell you about extrinsic as well as the intrinsic semiconductor. Just hold on. Okay, so the mass action law says that N into P is equals to N I square. Sorry, I didn't have to make it like that. But I hope you understand. So this is the concentration of electrons this is the concentration of holes and this is concentration of intrinsic semiconductor or you can say this is the intrinsic concentration Right, so in a rough language, if I have to tell you what is it, the intrinsic semiconductors are the ones which are pure and the extrinsic semiconductors are the ones with doping. We'll study more about that. Hold on, to study more about that in doping topic. I'll take it separately because this is an important topic. So if you want the statement of this, it will not come in gate exam. But you know, I should like put it here. Just wait. So the statement of mass action law says that in a semiconductor intrinsic or extrinsic, extrinsic under the thermal equilibrium, the product of electrons and holes is always a constant and is equal to the square of intrinsic concentration. You will get a lot of questions on this formula. We will do a lot of questions of, on this in the next video. Right. So today we did a lot of easy topics like the temperature, thermal voltage. I gave you a hang about the mobility, the energy gap, the energy band diagrams, the Einstein equation, the diffusion constant and the mass action law. So today we did it in, in a compact way. So in the next lecture, we'll study them in an elaborate way. We'll do more about intrinsic, extrinsic. We'll do P-type, N-type, basically the classification of, you know, semiconductors, the electrical properties of germanium and silicon, the diffusion and diffusion current. We'll do all the gate question on the topics that we covered today, as well as what we'll cover in the next lecture. So stay tuned and keep studying.